Good morning, Barry Bryson back with you again for five good minutes in the word. Today we're talking about the book of James. Um, I love the book of James and you love the book of James. Um, and I think there's a very good reason for this. And I'm thankful that we have the book of James and that his name is attached to it because otherwise I wouldn't feel very affectionate towards our brother James from what we know about him in uh, the New Testament. James, as well as Jude, are brothers of Jesus. They were raised in his household. He was their big brother. Uh, James, of all the people mentioned in the New Testament, other than Jesus, is the one uh, who is attested very early on in uh, outside historical sources. Josephus mentions James as a particularly pious man and reports on the death of James as a martyrdom of a righteous man. Um, so James is really well known. James is a leading figure of the church at Jerusalem. We, we know this from Acts chapter 15, from Acts chapter 21. Um, he is a leader of the group. From what we know about James early on, <laughs> Jesus' brothers were not particularly supportive of his ministry in the Gospels. Um, although James and his brothers are there in Acts at the end of Acts chapter 1 among the believers, and although he emerges as a leader, it's not always necessarily uh, presented in a good light. In uh, Galatians chapter 2, uh, chapters 1 and 2, excuse me, the Apostle Paul in the autobiographical section talks about people from James who were very strong in, in holding on to their Judaism, coming to Antioch and causing division in the congregation there between Jews and Gentiles who are now Christians and leading astray uh, Peter and even Barnabas. Um, in Acts chapter 21, when the Apostle Paul brings the contribution to the poor saints in Jerusalem, uh, back, back to Jerusalem, he meets with James. And James is not completely happy to see him, is awfully ambivalent about his coming. He says, listen, uh, we're happy about your work, but the thing is thousands of Christians in this city still hold on to their Judaism and they're not happy that you're here. So what is to be done? We've got some men who have made a vow at the temple, take them to the temple tomorrow and pay the fees for their vow, something Paul does. And that's when Paul gets arrested. And so he's sort of the face of the opposition, really, of the Judaizers. And then when we come to the book of James, uh, heavens, we just, we hear the voice of Jesus in it. We really do. That's why we love it so much. We read the book of James and we hear Jesus, particularly from Matthew's gospel, particularly in the Sermon on the Mount. In fact, many commentators and scholars have gone back and really um, shown how the book of James is structured on the Sermon uh, on the Mount um, in Matthew chapters 5 through 7. If you received a phone call from my brother, uh, he could pass himself off as me on the phone uh, because he has a similar voice. And we hear the voice of Jesus and the voice of James. And in a couple of particular ways, one is in that he says things so succinctly. I did a series on the book of James one time called One Sentence Textbooks, but uh, James teaches us all we need to know about a subject in a single sentence. And I use chapter one, verse 19 as my example. Uh, but let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Verse 20, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. One sentence, and he tells us everything we need to know about communication. Be quiet and listen. Truly listen, and only after you have listened should you speak. And you should never assume that you know what others are saying, and you shouldn't be quick to take offense and get angry because the anger of man doesn't achieve the righteousness of God. What else do we need to know about communication that we get in that one sentence from the book of James? I don't know where to start reading without reading the whole book. That's why we love it so much. Um, I just want to refer you to the book of James. If you're missing Jesus' voice and you want to hear it again, James is as good a place as any. Um, um, he uh, he uh, even uses the words like peacemaker that, that 
that Jesus has used and that no one else uses. Another one of those one sentence textbooks. Um, uh, James chapter three, verse 18. The seed whose righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And if we want to know anything else about getting along, what, what else do we need but this? You know, you sow the seeds of peace and you let them grow and you have to be a peacemaker. Well, read the book of James. You'll hear the voice of Jesus. You will be nourished and warmed and filled with the word of God. Thank you for joining me for five good minutes. Tomorrow, we'll talk about First Peter.